So we'll see what guided back propagation is. So idea here is a bit hacky, a bit heuristically, but it still works very well. So let's see what it is, right? So suppose you feed an input image to a convolutional neural network. That image will go through all the convolution layers and say at one convolution layer, this is what your feature map looks like. I'm operating at a very small scale. I'm just con considering a two cross two feature map, okay? Now we consider one neuron in some feature map at some layer. Okay, so we'll consider this particular neuron, and we are finding interested in finding the influence of the input on this neuron. So this is what I'll do is I'll set all the other neurons in this layer to zero because I don't care about them. I only care about this particular neuron, so I'll just focus on that. And we now back propagate all the way back to the image. Okay, that means I'll compute. Uh, if I call this as H2, then I'll compute do H2 by do I1, I2, I3, and so on. Okay. Now recall that during forward pass, what happens is because you have ReLU neurons, any output which was negative that was clamped to zero. In the forward pass, any output which was negative was clamped to zero. So what would happen to the gradients when they flow back through those neurons? We already did this. If a ReLU neuron is dead, the gradients don't flow back, right? So the gradients will not flow back through these neurons. That means the only the uh, okay, so only these gradients will actually flow back, which correspond to non-negative entries in the image before it or in the matrix above it, right? Is that fine? So now these guys use this interesting idea that in the forward pass, you don't allow negative things to go forward. So the backward pass also do something similar. Don't allow the negative influences to go back. That means any gradient which is negative, just clamp it to zero. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, all these negative elements in the gradient, I'm going to set them to zero. You see that? So this is just taking the same idea which you applied at forward propagation that ReLU clamps the output to zero if the influence was negative. In the backward pass, also do the same. Any gradients which are negative just clamp them to zero. So the intuition here was that maybe there was a pixel which is really influencing the particular neuron and it stands out, but because there are some positive and negative gradients flowing back, they seem to cancel each other and all these influences tend to be zero because that's what we observed. That image was largely gray with very few non-gray pixels. So this is very heuristic because the reason I call it uh, a heuristic is because you are messing with the math, right? The math tells you that the correct gradient has to go back irrespective of whether it's positive or negative. But they give this justification that on based on two things, in the forward pass, you are not passing the negative gradients, uh, negative uh, out outputs. So in the backward pass also kill them. And they should avoid this canceling of positive and negative output. So this is known as guided back propagation because you are uh, meddling with the actual back propagation. You are uh, doing something different. And uh, so the idea was to neglect all the negative influences. And when they apply this guided back propagation, this is what the influence looks like. You see that it's much, much sharper now. It's actually very nice. It's focusing completely on the eyes. And you can see the layout of the cat much more clearly as in the earlier pixel, earlier image, right? So this is a popular technique to use to for various things. It's also, uh, among other things, uh, for, in, for understanding what your convolutional neural network is doing. Right? So this lecture is entirely about understanding what are the neurons learning, what are the weight matrices learning, what are the kernels learning and so on. So these are all again tricks that you need to have in your repository to be able to do something more than just reporting accuracy, okay, I get 70% accuracy on this data set, right? So this guided back propagation is one algorithm that you will implement as a part of the assignment. So 